we read that at Antioch, when they were worshipping and fasting before the Lord, that the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate Paul and Barnabas out and send them off to work as I've showed them. So the people say, there, when you're worshipping, the Holy Spirit turns up. Let's have a good careful look at what the New Testament words for worship actually are. The main word is proskuneo, which comes 59 times. And then there are other words, sebamai and eusebio, and these three all mean what we understand by worship, reverence, or that kind of thing. Then there's another class of words, latruo and liturgeo, which have the sense of work, which we noticed in the Old Testament of the Hebrew word there, uh, rather similar. It's interesting that the word we've got here is liturgeo. And if you look this up in the Classical Greek Dictionary, it says that at Athens, the word meant to serve expensive public offices at one's own expense. We're reminded of David, who said he wouldn't offer the Lord what cost him nothing. There are six examples of the use of the noun from liturgio in the New Testament. Three of them can mean worship, that's fine. Uh, number four, Luke chapter one, when Zechariah was doing the temple service. Well, I think he was doing more than just worshiping. I think he was in charge and putting stuff out and putting it away and generally running the show. A bit more than just worshiping. In 2 Corinthians, it's used of when the people gave money to Paul. You couldn't translate it worship there. And in Philippians, this is striking, we read of Epaphroditus that he almost died, risked his life, making up for the help that they couldn't give to Paul. And liturgia is the word for help there. So I think liturgia has much more of a concept of really doing something, ministering, uh, serving in that sort of way. And personally, I think a better translation would be when they were ministering before the Lord. Well, you say, isn't that the same as worship? Well, I don't think so. Do you remember the parable in the Gospels? Then they will reply, uh, the sheep and the goats, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison where we cared for you? And then he will reply, truly I say to you, when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. It seems to me the way we minister to the Lord is to show love to other people as Jesus asked us to do. Well, was Paul doing this? Was he visiting them in, in prison and so on? I don't think so personally. I think he was using his gifts that the Lord had given him. We read that they were prophets and teachers doing this, and the Lord wanted somebody to go around the Mediterranean teaching. And this tends to be confirmed when you look three chapters further on. The Holy Spirit again spoke to them. They wanted to go into Asia, but he said no. And then they wanted to go somewhere else, and he said no. And they ended up going to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called, the preach, uh, called them to preach the gospel to them. So I think Paul was using his gift to preach the gospel, and this was his ministry. So I think a better translation is that at Antioch, it was when they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, when they were preaching the word, which is what Jesus had asked them to do. So we come back to this, obeying the commands of Jesus once again.